Hello and welcome. My name is John Strand, and this video is part of the Incident Response Series. We're going to talk about three things associated with the NIST IR-861. Boy, that's a mouthful, and boy, that sounds interesting. So why exactly do I recommend going with NIST? That would be my first thing. Go with NIST. Really, if you're looking at this video and you're trying to find an incident response framework, just go with NIST. Why? Because it's kind of like the old adage, no one got fired for going with IBM, even though that is now probably not true anymore, the IBM thing. But NIST is kind of like that. They're ubiquitous. They're everywhere. Everyone uses them. They tend to be very large, kind of ungangly incident response frameworks. And I'll talk about how to pare that down to where it makes a lot more sense a little bit later. But it's a framework that generally, whenever an auditor comes, they're probably going to be okay with it, or at least aware of it. I mean, if you have an auditor and they're like, well, we've never heard of this NIST thing, time to get a new auditor. It's really a bad sign if they have never heard of anything like the NIST 800 series for computer security. So once again, it is an absolutely wonderful framework to start with. It is pretty much the most vanilla generic framework that can be accepted by the most standards that are out there. That being said, brings up my second point, which is you may need to use something else. It may be entirely possible if you're under uh, health and human services, or if you're working in an environment that requires diamond, or you're working in Europe, you may need some type of ISO-based standard. That is okay too. And what's cool about this is if you establish your policies and you use NIST as a baseline, almost all of the things associated with NIST are going to be applicable to other frameworks. That's because they ultimately all steal from each other. And honestly, it goes into a long conversation that I have when I used to drink heavily where people were stealing things from the SANS Institute. SANS had the Pickerel framework, preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. I've only taught that 150 times. And other frameworks kind of stole it and they couldn't steal it outright. So they just kind of stole it. So for example, NIST has, you know, a framework that kind of breaks things down into four different phases. Preparation, detection and analysis, containment, eradication and recovery. And then four is post-incident analysis. It's almost like they tried to not use the SANS thing, but they kind of did anyway, because these same types of steps will be applicable to a wide variety of different frameworks. So if you start with NIST, you're like, oh gosh, we got to throw it all out and start all over again. Now nah, you're just going to take the sections, retitle them and move them into a different format and you're going to be totes legit. Three, I honestly don't care. I know that that sounds weird. I've been doing incident response, teaching incident response for a really, really long time. And as I said, I used to drink heavily and get into arguments about what frameworks people should use. And then I had a revelation when I got sober. The revelation was I was being an asshole. And other people that get into arguments about these types of things are probably a-holes as well. No one really cares. And the people that do are generally people you don't want to party with. I was one of them. So the point is not to get the right framework. The point is to have a framework to have a plan. There's a wide variety of different frameworks that are out there. If you find one that suits you, go with it. If you're just getting started, you really, really can't do all that bad by starting with the NIST 861 Revision 2. So go check it out. I know it's horrible when you're reading it. I get all of that, but it's, it's important. These things are important when auditors show up or insurance companies after a hack. So make sure that you have a plan. That is the most important thing. Have a plan and then try to stick to it. So thank you so much. This is brought to you by Anti-Siphon Security Training and Black Hills Information Security. See you in the next video.